If that's a MILF, count me in! How many people have babies out there? Cheer if you have babies. Not enough of you. How many people don't have babies? Don't be so proud of it. You're gonna kill humanity, you keep that up. Let me tell you how it works. For those of you, I know there's some ladies out there who don't quite understand how it works to have babies, the ones who cheered. Here's what happens. A man and a woman, they lay together. Sometimes they stand in the bathroom of a 7-Eleven, but when I say lay, I just mean they are together. And the man takes his, he puts his, it's like a, it's like a piston in an engine with a fresh oil change and well, the women I'm with don't need lube, but, um, no. Because I do the drive through before I do the, yeah. Hey, I'm an organic fucker. So this, um, the, um, the Cave of the Winds is lubricated, and, um, the La Vita Pass comes in, and what happens, it's a friction thing, you see. And sometimes you can kiss each other, sometimes you can close your eyes and just turn away. <laughs> Depends on where you are and what happened. Um, but with enough friction, it's like rubbing two sticks together. Yeah, but instead of fire, you have a milky liquid. <laughs> and that is called spooge. <laughs> it's a Latin term, it's a Latin term. And the spooge... <laughs> Imagine you're driving down I-25 <laughs> towards Los Cruces. And by the way, I found out why they call it Los Cruces earlier. Because if you live there, you're like, just fucking crucify. This is terrible. I don't want to put me out of my But imagine you're the spooge on a giant spooge shuttle, and there's eight million of you on the bus. And you're headed up the Ethiopian tubes to... The little ovunculars, I don't know what they're called. They're little ovaries. ovaries, thank you very much. Imagine an Easter egg without chocolate. That's what an ovary is. And so the spoon shuttle pulls up and there's only one room at the ovum. And so eight million spooges. <laughs> it's like a cage match. Imagine a cage match with trout and all of these fish are slapping against each other, trying to get through to the one room with a view. I'm sorry, a womb with a view. And the strongest spooge survives. And so it's sort of like, you know, American Idol. <laughs> Without, he might be one of the spooges, I don't know. Cause he's kind of a dick. Um, so then one of them gets in and they turn on the heat. And they're like, this is nice, I like this. They put on a movie. They turn the microwave to nine months. The woman, she gets fat, and at first people think, she's eating too much, she should really lay back. But then she tells them after the first tricycle that, um, <laughs> she says, you know what, I think I'm going to have a little babies. And they said, wow, really? I thought you were just fat. Um, and then the second trimester comes, and they're like, I'm going to, and then everyone, you know, they buy them presents, you get them like um, little, clothing and little shoes and what I would get them is just a fucking lottery ticket and say good luck with that shit because <laughs> that could be a murderer you're about to birth or the next pope we don't know what's going to happen um, and then when it finally comes time to have birth the woman she goes and she gets you know and some women have it underwater yeah, right. huh yeah I think that's fucked up but personally I mean I don't know you want a little aquaman in your life I don't know I guess if your first sperm was a fish, why not give birth underwater? Some women do it at home with a witch doctor from Africa. They're called mid-witch wives. Some people go to the hospital and let doctors use like the seat clamps and the, the power hoses to... I know, right? Some women do it natural, no drugs at all. Yeah, those women, they do it once. And they're like, oh no, I'm not fucking doing that again. I want drugs, the next six children I have. But when the little creature, the little miracle comes out, the little baby Jesu comes out, and you look at it, and you say, yeah, it's fucking ugly, right? You're like, 
That's something my dog should have birthed. Look at that lizard shit looking creature from American Dad. And then what does the first thing the baby do? He cries, but then he sees the boob and he goes, ah! And that's why burlesque exists, because from the moment, the moment we come out of that little race car, we want the boobs, and we go to our graves wanting boobs in our face. I tell you, men and women, right? It's not just men, women. We can't help looking at boobs, we can't help it. Every pair of boobs is different. Every pair of boobs is unique. Some women's boobs don't even match their own boobs. Some nipples are Mercury, the other one's Saturn. You're like, I don't know. And I'm like, oh, look at that, because that's interesting. Boobs are like cars. They come in all shapes and sizes, makes and models. Some boobs do better in snow. And that's why we're here tonight, to celebrate breasts and boobs. Yeah. This is worship. This is like the church of the Latter-day Saints. This is a good thing. And uh, <laughs> we have just a few more acts and then we're gonna take a break and we can talk more about boobs during the break if you'd like, I've seen a lot of them. Um, this next act, she is, um, the song I like, the song is by uh, Susie and the Banshees. Yeah. Right, okay, so what is burlesque and boobs but, it's peekaboo, burlesque is peekaboo, yes! Burlesque is Peekaboo. She's doing Peekaboo by Susie and the Banshees. Say hello to Nairi Nix. Thank you.